Good day. Welcome back, everyone, for another lesson. So in this lesson, we will continue to talk about periodic trends. Um, I will address electronegativity and ionization energy because they are very similar, as you will see. So let's take a look at ionization energy first. So what is ionization energy? It's the energy required to remove the outermost electron from an atom. So by doing that, we create an ion. In other words, the charge is, not, is no longer zero. There's an imbalance between the protons and the electrons. So if we take the example on the left, the drawing, let's say an atom came along and needed to gain an electron because we know that they all try to have a full octet that makes them stable. So let's pretend there's an atom in the vicinity it needs to gain an electron. It might want to steal this electron away. So this electron will leave and will go to the other atom that needs it. So it no longer has this electron. So now it has two electrons, but three protons. So it's no longer neutral. We call this an ion. So it's a non-neutral atom. So ionization energy, it says it, it says it sorry, ion. How much energy is required to steal away that electron? Now, it will depend on what kind of atom we're looking at, in what family or what group they are. So we know that, for example, group number one, they all these atoms have one valence electron. It's much easier to give up that one valence electron than to gain seven to go up to eight. So these guys will want to give up their electron very readily, so they would have a low ionization energy because it's so easy. It doesn't require much work to steal from them. Same thing for the alkaline earth metals, group number two. They have two valence electrons. They can either gain six or lose two in order to have a full octet. Again, it's much easier to lose two, so it doesn't require much work to steal away from them. So in that case, they will also have a low ionization, ionization sorry, energy, a little bit higher than these because the alkali metals have only one valence electron, so it's e even easier to steal from them, but nevertheless, both groups have a low ionization energy. Now, if we go to the other side, if we go to the halogens, these guys have seven valence electrons. They don't wanna give them up. They wanna actually gain one. So it's very difficult to steal from these atoms because they don't want to give up their valence electrons. They're not interested at all. Same thing with the noble gases. That's even worse. They already have a full outer shell, so they don't want to give up their, their valence electrons. It's extremely difficult to steal from them. So these atoms would have very high ionization energies. So again, just to reinforce the same idea, lithium has one valence electron. It's very easy to steal it. Beryllium has two valence electrons very easy to steal them. It wants to give them up. It doesn't want to gain another six. That's too much work. Much easier to get rid of the two that it has. Boron has three valence electrons. So three is still easier to give away than to gain five. Carbon has four. It's sitting on the fence. So it's getting a little bit more difficult to steal these electrons. Getting more difficult over here because nitrogen has five. It wants to gain three. It doesn't want to give up any of the valence electrons that it has, and so on and so forth, all the way to neon, which, as I explained, has eight. It has a full octet. It's absolutely not interested in giving up electrons. It's going to be extremely difficult to steal from neon. So you would have to apply a very high ionization energy in order to create an ion out of this atom, in other words, in order to steal electrons from neon. So that's along a period. The ionization energy would increase. Along a family, it's slightly different. Uh, it has to do with the number of shells. So where is it easier or harder to steal? This atom has two shells as opposed to this atom has four shells. It's much easier to steal an electron that's so far away from the nucleus as opposed for lithium, there's only two shells. This valence electron is closer to the nucleus. So if I had to pick between the two, this one is easier to steal from this one is harder to steal from. So this one would have a higher ionization energy relative to the atoms in its group. 
because it's slightly harder to come and take this electron because it's closer to the nucleus than to take away this one because it's further away from the nucleus. So this one, less work, lower ionization energy. So if we look at the periodic table, just for the general trend, the ionization energy is higher at the top of a family and it's higher at the end, as it shows over here, at the end of a period. So really the general trend is diagonal over here. So in this area, you would find the elements with the highest ionization energies. It's harder, it's harder, it's the hardest to steal from these atoms because they don't want to give up their electrons. Now, if we look at electronegativity, it's kind of the flip side of this coin. It's very similar. So electronegativity is the attraction or affinity. So in other words, how badly does an atom want to gain an electron? So we were looking at how much work it is it to steal away. Now we're looking at how much in love um, atoms are with electrons. Okay, so how likely, likely they are to gain an electron. So the more they love electrons, the higher the value of the electronegativity. Okay, so the alkali metals, do they want to gain electrons? No, they want to give them up. So they would have low electronegativity. On the other side, halogens want to gain electrons. So the halogens would have very high electronegativity. They love electrons. The noble gases would have no electronegativity. They don't want to gain. They already have a full octet. So these guys are not interested in gaining anything they would have no electronegativity. So this family, the halogens, would have the highest values, while the alkali metals would have the lowest values. Now, along a period, who loves them the most? Well, sodium, if I take this row or this period, sodium doesn't like them much. Magnesium, not much either. But if we move towards the right, these atoms want to gain electrons, so they tend to love electrons more. So the trend really increases along the period. As we move from left to right, the love for electrons or the electronegativity value increases. Okay, so it's very similar because if you look at, again, the periodic table, it has a similar look. So if I had to force one of these guys to gain an electron, lithium would tend to gain, if forced, would tend to gain more easily than francium. Why? Because the last shell is very close to the nucleus. So the nucleus would have an easier time attracting an electron than francium who has seven shells. It's so hard to attract an electron when your last shell is so far away from the nucleus. So if they were forced, lithium would gain an electron. It doesn't want to, obviously, but in that case where it's forced, lithium would attract an electron much more than francium. So lithium would have a higher electronegativity. Now, if we look at fluorine versus acetine, same thing. Acetine has a lot of shells. Fluorine only has two shells. Fluorine will have an easier time attracting the electron that it's missing because the nucleus is so much closer to the outer shell. Now, along a row, these guys don't want to gain, so they're not interested in attracting, in, in attracting electrons, so they have a low affinity, a, a low love for electrons. And at this end, we have atoms that want to gain electrons, so these guys over here really want to gain electrons, so they have a high electronegativity. Again, the noble gases, they do not want to gain electrons, they have a full outer shell, so they have... Uh, very low values or values basically at zero. So that's what it is for uh, electronegativity and ionization energy. You can see the patterns look the same, although the two trends, the definitions are opposite. One, it's how much work is it to steal an electron, that's ionization energy, and the other one, it's how much does an atom want to gain an electron. So it's kind of the flip side of the coin, that's electronegativity. So if you have questions, don't be shy, ask questions in uh, the comments below, and it'll be my pleasure to uh, help you out. All right, have a good one. See you soon.